Hello. I am running a couple minutes behind schedule. So here we are. All right. I need to get our second camera situation up and going. Um, invite copy. And then I need to make myself some coffee and then we'll get started. Paste. Oh, I need to get my headphones. I'll be right back. I always have to plug my headphones into my phone when I do this two camera situation or else we get all sorts of crazy feedback. <laughs> okay. Or, so we're going to make chocolate chip cookies today because it's my dad's birthday and I'm going to drop them off for him because he loves chocolate chip cookies. I need to, oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Sorry. I just didn't want to leave everybody, everybody waiting while I got this all set up. So I'm just a little bit behind schedule here. There we go. All right, okay, we got our second camera set up. You can't see it yet, but I'll add it in a second. And then I am just going to make myself some coffee. I slept for about three and a half hours last night, so I'm a little bit tired. Um, and then we're gonna get started on our chocolate chip cookies. can hear me I'm gonna just open up Facebook real quick I can't put water in there I've been doing a lot of testing trying to get things set up for um, recording some Zumba classes to put online and in the process I messed up all of my sound settings <laughs> so i'm a little bit paranoid I gotta be honest oh look there i can hear myself okay perfect fantastic hello perfect kelly you can hear me all right i'm just gonna make some coffee and then we're gonna get rolling uh because I'm less, I'm not very organized again today. <laughs> All right, today's definitely a double espresso sort of day. So, oh, for anyone, because I know everybody has been very concerned about my coffee situation. I ordered coffee a week ago Sunday. A week ago Sunday? Yeah, today's Thursday. I told you three hours of sleep. I ordered coffee a week ago Sunday, and on Monday, like a couple days ago Monday, I got the email to say that they had shipped it, and I was like, what is going on? But we are set because it has arrived. So get myself a cup. I need a big one. I need a big cup. I don't know if you guys can hear my coffee maker go or not. Anyway, so we're making chocolate chip cookies today. And this is another recipe that I have made many, many, many times over the years. So if you're gonna be making it along with me, 
I apologize. I forgot to ever come back and tell you what ingredients you needed. So I will do that when we get off of the live video. But I'm going to get my trusty recipe out here it's on a piece of paper. You know, those cookbooks where you just cram things in. This is one of those. So once again, I am actually going to be making a half batch because a full batch of these cookies makes a lot of cookies and the man doesn't need that many cookies. So I'm going to grab a bowl. Oh, and I'm going to put on our, our split screen here. It's streaming. Okay. There. I had to mute myself. Okay. So we've got ourselves a bowl. And we need one cup of butter or margarine. So I'm going to get out my good old butter block. And I didn't pre soften this, so I am going to throw it in the microwave for a couple seconds just to soften it up. But you all should know by now if you didn't already, that you have the little measuring thing on the side of your butter, so you can just use that. So we're gonna use the one cup and hack that off. And then I am just gonna cut this into a couple smaller slices inside the bowl. And we don't want this to melt. So I'm just going to put it in the microwave for like 15 seconds and assess its hardness. Whoa! <laughs> you hear that? I, I nearly smashed the whole thing. Oh boy. I have to make my latte. I have to go put some eggnog syrup because that's the only kind of syrup I have. So a little pump of that. Oh, I didn't press the button. It's hard for your milk to froth if you don't press the button, guys. Plug that back in. Uh-oh. We seem to be having a froth or malfunction over here. Oh, no, it's going now. All right. Phew. Yes, I have. I have, but I'm, I'm too lazy, so in general, but that is a good, that is a good little trick. Oh, I'm going to do, there, so everybody can see. <laughs> I forget that that is an option. I always feel so fancy. All right, I'm going to give that another few seconds. There's something wrong with my frother. It's very upsetting. Thank you. I'll have to troubleshoot that after. Oh, maybe I'll see if it'll do a cold froth. Let's see if it will do that. All right, so my butter isn't melted and I didn't want it melted. It's just softer. So we will use that. So we're going to get my favorite pink spatula, not my spoonula, my spatula, and some sugar. That butter is actually a little bit hard, so I could have left it in there for a few more seconds. So I'm going to use a full cup of white sugar. So this is a one-third measure, so we'll put three of those. I'm 
going to use my Hmm. Yeah, I really could have left that in a little bit longer. But that's all right. We'll just stab this a bit. It'll all be fine. So you can actually use shortening for this recipe too, but shortening makes a much softer cookie. So I prefer margarine or butter i'm using butter and if you get let your butter or margarine get too soft that also will make a really soft cookie so if it is closer to the melted side of things not like straight up melted but you know very very soft it's going to generate a softer cookie at least that's been my experience all right so that's not perfect but it's a good start and more importantly, we have some frothed milk so I can finish making my latte. Because it's cold froth, so this is going to be more of an iced latte. I'm not sure what's going on with it. So I've got the white sugar is mixed-ish. So I'm going to get my brown sugar. And this you would use a cup and a quarter of brown sugar. So I'm going to get an eighth cup because it'll fit in this container better because it's a skinny little container. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What did I say? Eight and a quarter. And I usually go a little bit short on sugar. So I didn't actually put a cup and a quarter. I put a cup and an eighth. So sue me. And then we'll go back to stabbing this. I'll have a drink of my cold coffee. It's not that cold. <laughs> I might need to get a spoon. Oh, I should preheat my oven. Three fifty. Or you can do it at 375 for a slightly shorter period of time, if you like. I feel like I always have to have a disclaimer that how much butter? I used the cup. I'm making a half batch. He doesn't need a full batch of these cookies. this thrilling watching you stir a bowl all right that's still not completely mixed but we're getting there and so now we're gonna add our eggs we're gonna use two eggs The full recipe says two cups. It does seem like a lot, I agree. <laughs> but if you recall, this recipe makes a lot of cookies. I have to wash my hands. So technically, 
you're supposed to really get that butter and sugar all mixed really, really well before you add these other things. I got it mixed as well enough, and the rest will come as we continue to add ingredients. I don't like to get myself too <laughs> concerned with ingredient or with recipe steps. So just adding those two eggs, I'm able to get in there way better already. So we still have a few chunks of butter, but we're getting there. That is the phrase of the day. We're getting there. <laughs> and I think next I have to add in vanilla. Yeah, so I'll grab one of my 50 containers of vanilla. I don't really have 50, but I cleaned out the spice cabinet on the weekend. It turns out I have a number of bottles of vanilla on the go. Um, so this is two and a half teaspoons. I'm, if you ever watch Nailed It, they always tell them don't eyeball it. I don't know when I last measured vanilla or almond extract or anything like that, but that was supposed to be one and a quarter teaspoon if you're keeping track. So we'll mix that in. Oh, there's a little brown lump of brown sugar in here somewhere. I keep seeing it and then it keeps disappearing. Where'd it go? Oh. Anyway, <sighs> so now we're gonna add flour, baking soda, and salt. So we need two and a half cups of flour, one and a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, and this says a tablespoon of salt. I can guarantee you I have never put anywhere near a tablespoon of salt in these cookies. I don't know, I can't even call it a typo because I hand wrote this, but I'm gonna put about that much salt, <laughs> just like a quarter teaspoon, not tablespoon, and then we'll get our flour and our baking soda. I hope there's enough flour in here. I definitely have enough flour. I just don't know if I have enough flour in this bowl. So the key here is to keep track of how much you've added, because that's where you can go wrong. So I need two and a half cups. This is a half cup measure. So I need five of them, but I'm not gonna add them all at once. I'm gonna add two to start. And then we're gonna mix it up and then we'll add more. See, things are already flying. If I added all of it at once, I'd end up with a pretty dandy mess. I'm probably gonna end up with a dandy mess anyway. I'm gonna turn this a little bit because I keep getting out of the frame. All right, so Mostly mixed in, so we still need to add three more. There's a one. There's a two. So I'm going to mix these, and then I'll put in that last bunch as well as the soda. And yes, proper bakers would mix all of their dry ingredients and then add them but that's why this is a fake cooking show. I suppose a proper baker would also, try not to drop my computer right off here, a proper baker would probably also sift their ingredients. All right, so we're gonna add this last half cup of flour. I'm gonna put this away, I'm gonna grab the soda baking soda that is. I 
I will measure the baking soda. The so baking soda, one and a quarter teaspoon. Of course, I would pick one that doesn't fit in the box. So there's one and a quarter. I'm going to mix this some more. So one thing, you know how muffin, when you're making muffins, you're not supposed to mix your batter until it's super smooth. When you're making cookies, you're supposed to mix your batter until everything's incorporated, but you don't want to keep mixing it for like ages afterwards, because when you do that, it makes them harder. Unless of course you want a hard cookie. Oven's ready. So, because these are chocolate chip cookies, obviously we're going to be adding chocolate chips. So my dough isn't completely come together because I'm going to go in there with my fingers, but I want to put my cook my chocolate chips in before I go in with my hands. So I'm going to grab my chocolate chips and then I'll go in with my hands and then we will get, uh, where can I put my chocolate chips? Right there. And then I'll finish incorporating everything that way. So the recipe says a two and a third cups of chocolate chips, but you guys know by now that I don't really feel like someone should tell you how many chocolate chips you should use. So I'm probably gonna use all the chocolate chips that I have. So I'm gonna put some in, I'm gonna mix it around a little bit so I can get a feel for how much chocolate chips I have in here. And I'm gonna add a bit more. So now I'm going to take off my ring and my watch and I'm going to wash my hands again and then I'm going to go in with my hands so I can finish incorporating the flour and get to the chocolate chips mixed throughout. And then we'll just have to bake them. Easy peasy. Oh, did you guys notice? I've got my pretty, my uh, bracelet I made on Monday on. Okay, so at first I'm gonna go in with just one hand. Both of them are probably gonna get in there eventually, but I like to try to keep one clean hand for as long as possible. Last summer, last fall, my husband and I went on a pasta making cooking class and we thought that we were going to be like paired together. So we were both going to be working on the same pasta. But when we got there, we discovered that everybody was making their own. Anyhow, he immediately got both of his hands in his eggy flour mixture and was in quite a mess. And I was like, you're supposed to keep a clean hand so you can do stuff. So make sure you try to get all of the bits off of the bottom of the bowl. You can see there's still a few things down there. So that's what I'm doing is just trying to grab that and mix it in. You don't want to knead the dough like it was bread or something, but you want to make sure the dough is coming together and that you're getting all that, those floury bits that sometimes get stuck on the bottom and mixing them in. So this dough is looking pretty good. I can pick it up with one hand. The bowl is mostly empty and I kept my clean hand. And then another little trick when you have a bunch of dough on your hands is you can just rub your hands together as long as they were clean when you went in and it will get rid of a lot of it. You know, if you have like those super giant fingers, sometimes you have to go along with a knife or something, but we didn't have that today. I ran out of soap at the other sink. Now all we have to do is scoop our dough onto some sheet pans. 
going to move some of these things to the side. We're going to get a couple cookie sheets. And we'll see if my uh, cookie scooper is actually clean today. So I am once again using these sheet pans from President's Choice. They are ridged. So you wouldn't necessarily have to put parchment or something on them. I'm still going to use parchment. A silcat will work, but I do find when you're making cookies that a silpat doesn't quite generate, or a silicone baking mat, if you don't know what a silpat is, um, it doesn't generate quite the same result. So I prefer a parchment paper. So my little cookie scoop is working today. If you don't have one of these, just use two spoons. This just helps you have a more uniform sized cookie. I tend to make fairly big cookies, but this kind of holds me back. So one thing about using one of these is that the stuff gets stuck in side, so sometimes you have to stop and clean it out. I'm just gonna put 12 on a pan and they're just round little guys right now. I'm going to give them a quick little flatten before I put them in the oven. That's just my preference. You can do whatever you want. Let's move this back a little bit. I might be able to put 15 on this pan. It's quite big. These cookies are going to spread, but Remember, it, how much they spread has a lot to do with how warm your butter was before you started. So I'm just going to give them a little. You don't have to do this. They'll flatten out on their own. But I'm weird. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stick three more down on the bottom here. I'm not quite on the silicone or on the parchment, rather, but. That's fine. And then I'm just gonna throw this tray right into the oven. I'm baking mine at 350. So you're looking at about 15 minutes. Kelly, watch out. Alexa, start a 13 minute timer. 13 minutes starting now. Um, I always like to make my timer for a minute or two shorter than what a recipe says, just so I can check on them. And then we'll make the next tray worth. If you're wondering if I'm going to eat any of this raw cookie dough, the answer is yes. I know that you're not supposed to do that. But I don't care. <laughs> see, you can see inside it's getting kind of full. So I'm just going to do a little sweep and just clean that out because you want that little guy in the middle to still be able to move if you're using one of these. Half the time I just use a spoon. You could also just use cooking spray. You don't have to use parchment or silpat or anything like that. When I was cleaning my spice cabinet, I also found my Paderno oil sprayer that I got years ago that I stopped using because I kept getting it clogged. But I think it's because I was always using um, olive oil and olive oil is a pretty thick oil. So I cleaned it all out on Saturday and then I put coconut oil in it. I buy the coconut oil that is, um, I don't know what the word for it is, but it's always in liquid form. You know how regular coconut is, coconut oil is solid at room temperature. I get the kind that's always liquid. Alexa, 
How much time is left on the timer? You have 10 minutes left on your timer. All right. So I'm going to put these ones in. That timer that I set three minutes has passed. So when I take the other ones out, I know I need to leave those ones in for three more minutes. And we have, so that made two and a half dozen. And I still have a bit of dough left in the bowl. So probably is going to make three dozen total. I'm going to grab one more cookie sheet just so I can get these all done. This cookie sheet's been through, been through some stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure if this is a cookie sheet I got when I got married or if it's one that's already been replaced. But if it's one that I got when I got married, it's 15 years old because today is actually my anniversary. So <laughs> oh, this isn't going to make quite another half dozen, but that's OK. It might. We'll see. I don't think so, though. I think we're going to be one. We're going to be one sad cookie short. Maybe I can get enough out of here for one last little cookie. This guy's not going to have any chocolate in him at all. What a travesty. Maybe I'll just save this bit to eat. This is the do not do this portion of the show. Don't do it. You forgot it was my anniversary? Linda Pinio. <laughs> my mother, that's funny. Like, I don't actually expect people to know or remember it. It's my anniversary. However, the fact that I got married on my father's birthday <laughs> generally means that my mother remembers. So <laughs> I think that's hilarious. Anyhow, that last, I've got five out of that last one. So we're a little bit short of three dozen. That's okay. So, Alexa, how much time? She ignored me. Alexa, how much time is left? You have seven minutes. And six seven minutes. Okay. Minutes I'm not going to make you, well, maybe I will. I'll make you wait for seven minutes so we can check on those ones um, so that you can know what they look like when they're done versus when they're not. So yes, today is my anniversary. And I just finally told my husband on the weekend, let's get rid of that close up. We don't need that right now. Um, because it was our 15th wedding anniversary. And usually I go off, thank you, on trips with my friends because he doesn't usually like to travel that much. I thought that this year we would go to Boston and we'd go to a Red Sox game and we do all that. And then maybe in the fall, we would go to Pittsburgh. So we go to Pittsburgh Penguins. Those are his two favorite teams. Um, we had enough travel points for both of those. So it was just a matter of like where we were going to stay and trip tickets and stuff. And I even was inquiring about vacation things because one of my best friends is his boss. So I can, you know, kind of underhandedly get in on Except now we're not going anywhere. So I told him on the weekend, I was like, well, I had great plans <laughs> for us, but now I guess your anniversary gift is that we still like each other. So <laughs> happy anniversary. I don't want to kill you today. <laughs> yeah. So let's get out some drying racks. Well, nope. Cooling racks, not drying racks. This isn't laundry. <laughs> and I'll put my watch back on. You guys, this week has been so long. I almost cried this morning when I realized that 
there was still three full days <laughs> because Monday was a long day. And then Monday evening, I technically had off, but I had scheduled a grocery pickup. And that, even when you don't have to go in the store, that is an endeavor these days, bringing home groceries. I had to wait for quite a while to get them, which was fine. I was at, because I finished my bracelet, which was fine. But by the time I got home, I was just so exhausted. And then Tuesday was bonkers because I had what? Three classes because I had to do the class that I would normally do Wednesday that I couldn't do. And then in between times, I was trying to figure out a setup. For those who don't know, Zumba, we're allowed to do live stream classes, but I'm not allowed to record classes, except they are now building their own platform. Um, and we're allowed to record classes to upload to that platform. But we have to use specific songs that they have authorized for us because of music licensing and everything, which is all great. I have no complaints about that. I think it's amazing. And they're going to have a way for us to live stream through their platform instead of using Zoom, which I think will be a lot more streamlined because, I mean, Zumba is building it for us to do Zumba on. So it's going to be much better than using like Zoom, which is just a video conferencing software. Anyway, so Tuesday I was trying to figure out the best way to record the classes with the best camera and the best or the best video feed as well as the best audio so when i upload it it's the best user experience and you guys i have all of the gadgets here i have so many different microphones and i have so many different cameras i mean hello i got different camera angles now i've got so many so many things i've got all the things and i watched all these tutorials and i'm really good with technology like i can set things up no problem but this was just like and i think part of the problem is because i have a macbook air so i don't have a huge amount of internal storage memory and one of the ways i knew i could do it is i could record it with my hdlr and then I could dub the sound in iMovie, but I don't think that my computer has enough, I don't think it has enough internal um, RAM to process and export an hour long HD video. <laughs> so I thought that's gonna do my computer in. So there's this other kind of software that you can use, but I, anyway, it was just this whole thing. I, I was working until 10 PM and I was getting mighty cranky. And then yesterday, of course, I had my course, which was great. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience, except for the fact that it went until quarter after 10, which I mean, I knew, I knew that's how long it was going to be. But in actuality, when you got to quarter after 10 and we were just going around the virtual room so everybody could say something that they were taking away from the day and people who were in the time zone where it was only six o'clock were like, sharing all of these stories and it was just like please can you answer the question i don't want to go to bed so i got off and by the time i put everything away it was like 10 30 and you can't just get off a 10 hour course and go directly to bed like i tried i was in bed before midnight but i didn't get to sleep until almost two and then that darn clara who's over there sleeping looking as cute as a button woke me up at five for breakfast and I didn't get back to sleep until like, it was after Joff went to work, which was just before 8.30. And then I had to get up at 9.40. So anyway, I'm a little tired. <laughs> I'm a little tired. And then of course I have Zoom for tonight. Anyway, I'm not complaining. I'm just stating that I'm quite tired. But the good news is they changed the... CERB, whatever those initials are. So I can, anyone who's making less than $1,000 can apply. But my question for that is, are we talking gross or are we talking net? Because I made more than a thousand, made more than $1,000 in the last 30 days if we're talking gross. But if we take away business expenses, I made like 500. So that's the question I have. And 
I don't really feel like calling and asking. It's got to be net. Because what's the point? How is it helpful if it's gross? If you made $10,000, but your expenses were $9,000, you still don't have any money. Anyway, I'm very glad that they made the change. Alexa must be just about ready to, to beep at us. So I must put some of these other things away so we have room. I never did use this spoon. Well, this isn't going to fit on there. I'm running out of real estate. We still have part of our bunny cake here, too. I ate the two ears because I put the coconut on them. But his sad little worrying eyes. We still have his eyes. Alexa, stop. All right, let's check on our cookies. So it was our top rack were the ones that we put in first. So we will see how they look. I'm going to put our close-up back on. Boop, just like that. I'm so tricky nowadays. So I got a little bit greedy putting those extra three on there. So they are getting a little bit close to one another. These... These are not done. I'm going to put them in, back in. Now, the bottom ones went in three minutes later, so they need at least three minutes. And the top ones, I'm going to say, need another two minutes. So I'm going to say we're going to put a two-minute timer and then five, no, four, three. Alexa, start a two-minute timer. Two minutes, starting now. Well, I figure that out. Do the two minute and then we'll do a three minute. And then that should add up. Yes, that's that should add up. And then when we take that first batch out, we can put the rest of those other ones in. And then when the other one comes out, we'll have to put a 13 minute timer. So much kitchen math. Oh, so I can tell you a little something that I learned yesterday in my yoga nidra training. So we did a bunch of nidras. Yoga nidra is, well, it's a state of being apparently, um, but it's a form of meditation. It's not, it's different than meditation, but that's the easiest way to say it's kind of like a meditation. Um, and I've always found, and this has always irritated me, that if I'm in a training or somewhere where we're doing a longer meditation or a nidra, that I'm fine for the first few minutes, but then after like five or six minutes, because sometimes you're doing like 30, 40 minute meditations or nidras, I have a hard time keeping my eyes closed and I can feel them like moving all over the place. And yesterday morning during the first one, I now always use an eye pillow because at least that prevents me from opening my eyes and it just puts enough pressure that even though I can feel my eyes moving around, it doesn't drive me crazy. <coughs> but during the first one yesterday, it was happening and it always does. And even though you're not supposed to be thinking, I was like, what is going on here? It's almost like my eyes are in like rapid eye movement. Like when you're asleep, but that's exactly what it is. Because when you go through the different levels, the um, brain wave that you're at when you're having REM sleep, it's one of the ones that you get into. Alexa, stop. So the reason my eyes are like going all crazy is because I'm at that level of sleep because yoga nidra is basically being in a deep, your body's in a deep sleep while your consciousness is still awake. I know it sounds woo woo. It is yoga after all. So these really could probably stay in for another minute or two, but I think they're going to be fine. So I'm going to leave those. I'm going to take the other ones. I'm going to put them on the taller rack and I'm going to turn them around because that's what I do. And then we'll put this other one in on the bottom. And Alexa, Ale oh, is that a three minute timer? Three minutes. Sorry. So yeah, that was a big thing that I learned yesterday. I've always wondered why my eyes do all this craziness and nobody else in the room 
the virtual room seem to have that problem. So I don't know if it's just because I'm, I'm so in tune <laughs> or if I'm just a weirdo, maybe it's a combination of the two, but I can't remember which, if it's alpha, beta, beta, I don't know. It's one of those is where that happens. Anyhow, so that was very interesting. Well, I think we're gonna wrap this up because we have a whole tray of beautiful looking cookies. Now these ones you can see, well you can't, I can see, you can't see super well that we have some golden brown along the edges. These are probably just a pinch underbaked. Now the ones that were on the bottom rack that are in just for their last couple minutes, they're gonna be a whole lot more golden brown around the edges. Normally what I would do, and I didn't do it this time, is when I check them, I would switch them. So the ones that were on the top rack, ones that are on the bottom rack, when I check them, I would switch them. And I'd also turn the pan just because, you know, different places in your oven heat differently and try to even that out. But let's just take a look at those ones that are almost done so you can see what I mean. These ones, you can see that the edges are a little bit more golden but these ones are still done. If, you, uh, if you're familiar with the Subway cookie, <laughs> these look more like, this, this, these are too warm to pick up really, but they're just, just barely golden on the bottom. So you're gonna wanna let those sit and cool before you take them off. Whereas if you left them in longer, they'd be more crunchy. So these are gonna be a bit softer. So anyway, those are my chocolate chip cookies. If you want the recipe, let me know in the comments and I will type it out for you. But thank you for tuning in. Tomorrow is yoga. We're going to be doing a yoga for stress and anxiety class at one o'clock Saturday. I still haven't decided. We're going to do a craft. I just haven't decided what craft yet. I haven't had enough time to think about it, shockingly. So hopefully this afternoon as I'm huttering away at some of my other to-dos, I will figure that out and I will post it. I have a couple ideas. I'm just not sure how I can make it work for most people based on what they would have in their house. So we'll see. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. Let's get rid of our close up. I hope you enjoyed today's live video and looks good enough to eat. Well, I hope they are good enough to eat. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, hopefully my father will like them. I know that he will because they're his favorite. Um, so have a wonderful afternoon. Alexa, stop. <laughs> have to get that in there for Kelly too. So her Alexa doesn't go crazy. Have a wonderful afternoon. I will see you tomorrow for yoga or Saturday for a, a craft of some sort. I just had another idea, something we could do. We need to do more scrapbook paper. People seem to have scrapbook paper. Anyway, we'll come up with that something and I will post it in the group maybe today or tomorrow. So have a good afternoon and I will talk to you soon. Bye.